Nick Lowell, who was detained in Japan in 1954, he is a former U.S. soldier serving a 10-year prison term. Nick is cleaning the prison's restroom in the first scene. Not long later he is provocatively stared at by five burly, tattooed men who emerge from the bathroom. When Nick walks into the restroom after they've left, he discovers that another man is hanging with his hands bound. While attempting to help the victim, Nick yells for the guards. Nick gets assistance from a fellow prisoner in lowering the man. It's odd that no one commends Nick for sparing the man from hanging. Not long after, Nick and the prisoner who had assisted him are taken away by a group of guards, who then beat them. The man who was going to hang himself wrote a note to the head jail guard informing him that a gang member will be released from prison. Nick is unable to understand the guards because he does not speak Japanese. After growing more and more agitated, the chief guard finally gives the order to confine Nick to a single cage inside the cell. As it happens, Nick is sharing the room with the man he had earlier prevented from being hanged. The man gives his name as Kiyoshi and claims to be Shiro Matsu, a member of the Yakuza clan. Then, Kiyoshi tells Nick about an escape strategy and asks for his assistance. In order to get sent to the hospital by the guards, Kiyoshi intends to stage a suicide attempt. An Ishimatsu member will arrive at the hospital to assist Kiyoshi to get away. Kiyoshi vows that the brothers in the Korematsu will assist Nick in the future if he is able to escape in exchange for this assistance. While prisoners are mining the prison grounds, the plan is established. Nick discovers a stone. He later sharpens the rock for Kiyoshi's use in his scheme. A few days later, still in his lonely cell, Kiyoshi asks Nick to watch over him as he gets ready to stab himself with the sharp rock, and to request that the guards come to his aid. Everything goes according to plan. The guards freak out and sound the alarm upon noticing Kiyoshi's condition. In summary, Nick is able to get freed from prison earlier than expected. He shaves his beard, cuts his hair short and gets ready to escape prison. Outside the prison, a guy and a car are waiting for Nick, preparing to drive him to the Korematsu headquarters in Osaka. The officials of the Korematsu clan greet Nick and express gratitude for his assistance upon his arrival. Then he receives an offer from one of the Korematsu leaders to work with an American. After receiving money from a Korematsu member to pay for hotel accommodations, Nick decides to accept the job that evening. Nick goes to a pub in a gambling area. Nick strikes into a conversation with a stunning Japanese woman at the bar, and he gives her a big tip right away. The following day, Kiyoshi brings Nick to a factory where he meets Anthony Panetti, an American. Nick's task is to negotiate with Panetti about his business and mental factory because he turned down Shiro Matthews' offer earlier. Using an American mediator, Sisu, a Kobe gang clan, had made Panetti an offer to negotiate. Nick's visit is not appreciated by Panetti. Rather, he attacks the Yakuza and Japanese culture while stating unequivocally that he will not sell the factory's metal for less than Shiro Matsu offered. Nick takes the hint that words by alone will not resolve the negotiation, so he takes a typewriter and bashes Panetta's head, forcing him to comply with Korematsu and remain silent. Idea. Nick is taken to a bar by Kiyoshi and other Shiro Matsu officials after he successfully completes his first job. But the Suzuki clan shows up to confront them about what they did to Panetti while they are drinking. Nick is harassed by a Sisu CSU clan member until he loses it and smashes a bottle over his head. As soon as the Korematsu members start pointing weapons at the CSU, they decide to give up on their plan to exact revenge on Nick and leave the bar. Nick gains Kiyoshi's approval as well as Korematsu's due to his actions at the pub. After that, Kiyoshi offers Nick a lavish apartment and declares his intention to ally with the Korematsu Yakuza. Later on, Kiyoshi asks Nick to do a task at one of their bars, where the proprietor is attempting to unseat Korematsu. After another round of failed discussions, Nick slices the bar owner's throat, and Kiyoshi stabs him to death. Nick receives an invitation from Kiyoshi to the Korematsu clan's nightclub after he completes the mission. This is where Nick saw the stunning woman he saw earlier at the pub, dancing with a few males. Nick keeps staring at this small Japanese woman. Then Kiyoshi chastises her while dragging her off the dance floor. He fears that members of the Sisu clan may bring weapons to the club and endanger her. Subsequently, Kiyoshi discloses that the woman is none other than his sister Miyu and begs Nick to accompany them home. Nick obeys, but Maya teasingly invites him inside as soon as he reaches her door. As their relationship deepens, Nick discovers a Yakuza tattoo on Maya's back. Things change the following day when Nick gets a call from Kiyoshi asking for a new task. He requests that he buy guns from an American soldier in order to complete the assignment. Kyoshi explains that Nick must complete this assignment by himself since the soldier must be unaware of the connection between Nick and this transaction to the Korematsu clan. After that, Nick makes his way to the docks, 
where he is expected to meet the American soldier for the exchange of weapons. He finds a dead body instead of the soldier, and the Sisu clan shows up shortly after. The clan makes an effort to seize Nick's money and halt the trafficking in weapons. But because Nick had already hidden the money in his car, the CSU members are unable to locate it, which enrages them and prompts them to decide to murder him. Nick is given the order to be killed by a CSU member, who also threatens to kneel. Nick obeys the order at first, but he soon uses his abilities to turn the tables, attacking the CSU clan and eliminating two of its members. The leader of Korematsu finds out about the mayhem at the docks. He instantly gathers Nick and Kyoshi together with the rest of the tribe. The leader of Shiromatsu believes that someone betrayed the plan to buy weapons. But Kiyoshi promises that Nick's two million dollars is secure because it was concealed. In addition, Nick is accused by the Korematsu commander of killing two CSU members by mistake, which may have led to a gang war. The leader of Shiromatsu instructs Nick to apologize and cut off two of his fingers in order to stop this. When Kiyoshi learns of this, he begs the Korematsu Matsu leader to let him amputate his own fingers. Remorseful for bringing Nick into it, the leader of the Korematsu clan accepts and then apologizes to the CSU clan for the deaths of their two members by sending the severed fingers of both Nick and Kiyoshi. The action then switches to Nick and the Korematsu leader having a car talk. The leader of the Korematsu, who also happens to be Kiyoshi's stepfather, tells him that he believes their clan has a Sisu spy. Nick was then officially welcomed and inducted as a member of the Shiromatsu clan during a ceremony that was attended by the Shiromatsu leader. Nick leaves the bar to speak with Kiyoshi later that evening as they celebrate his induction. When Nick first started dating Miyu, Kiyoshi did not approve of their relationship. Nick tells Kiyoshi about this. Kiyoshi is worried about his sister's safety and doesn't want her to marry into the Yakuza, but Nick is adamant and promises to protect me no matter what. Upon discovering that, Nick and I, you two have become close and Kiyoshi has finally agreed to their connection. He even congratulates Nick on his official acceptance into the Shiromatsu clan, which makes them brothers. Nick chooses to have a similar Muse tattoo on his back after becoming a member of the Yakuza and winning Kyoshi's favor. Miu stays by Nick's side for the tattoo application, elucidating the meaning behind the distinctive body art of the Yakuza. Nick completely immerses himself in the Yakuza way of life over the next few days. One day Nick sees a CSU student who had tried to kill him at the docks, as he is traveling a train with me and you. The Sizu group then comes into view, reaching the headquarters of the Korematsu clan. They intend to make a business proposal, but Sisu sends someone who is regarded as extremely young instead than their boss which infuriates the Korematsu leader. In spite of the leader's expression of disillusionment, he is convinced to accept the business proposition by an officer from the Korematsu clan named Orochi, but the Korematsu boss rejects it right away. Orochi and Kyoshi are drinking that night. Orochi bemoans the fact that the leader of the Korematsu clan disregarded his counsel. Orochi seemed to have already given in to his rage, despite Kyoshi's warning. This is particularly clear when Orochi gets home, as the leader of the Korematsu clan becomes irritated and won't meet with him. Orochi exits the bar in order to see Miyu. Orochi attempts to resume his romantic relationship with Miyu, but she firmly rejects him. It comes out that they had a romantic relationship in the past. Becomes enraged, achieves its zenith, and tries to bother her by slapping her out of wrath. The action then switches to a sumo match meeting between the Matsu, Suzu, and Shiro clans. This time, the Korematsu leader is approached by the CSU chairman himself with a new suggestion. This is an invitation for the Korematsu leader to step down and let his clan join CSU, not a commercial venture. The leader of Korematsu declines the offer, seeing it as offensive. He tells the chairman of CSU that the Korematsu family is a pack of wolves, not dogs, imprisoned behind a fence. He tells the CSU chairman to drive carefully on his return trip to Kobe before heading out. On his walk home, Nick is unexpectedly greeted by an American man. The man is Nick's partner and American soldier Polly Bowers, who is currently on leave. Nick feels obligated to go with Bauer as he appears pleasantly surprised to see him. But while they speak, Bowers reveals that Nick staged his own death to avoid a court-martial and threatens to report Nick. Thinking quickly on his feet, Nick extends an invitation to his house. Nick gives Bowers a drink at home, but not before killing him with a little knife stab to the neck. After that, Nick goes to Maya's residence. Nick is surprised to find Maya's cheek bruise when she opens the door. He begs me to tell him who hurt her, seeming angry. Though she won't say it, she does admit that she is expecting Nick's child. She unexpectedly asks him to go. 
Next, Nick tells Kyoshi about Maya's pregnancy at his residence after leaving Maya's. Nick promises Kyoshi that he can leave the Korematsu family if that is what Kyoshi desires. Not upset, Kyoshi extends an invitation to Nick to come inside the house. Subsequently, he hands Nick two swords known as Disho, stating that the first one belonged to Kyoshi's father and was used for ending one's own life. Then Kyoshi explains that Nick will now be responsible for looking after him since he has been looking after her since she was a little child. Nick takes up one of the swords from the D display and requests assistance burying Bauer's body. However, over at CSU headquarters, Orochi is seen conversing with the head of the clan. It is revealed that Orochi intends to ruin the clan and has deceived the Shiromatsu. The Shiromatsu commander visits a tailor store the following day with Kyoshi and Nick in tow. When the boss doesn't come out of the dressing room, Nick pursues and finds the leader being strangled by a tailor shop employee. Nick tries to save him, but Kyoshi shoots the employee to death after entering the room and seeing what's happening. They dash to the car, but the CSU clan ambushes them before they can flee. During the altercation, Nick and Kyoshi attempt to defend the leader by fighting back. A member of the Suzuki clan shoots Kyoshi to death. After escaping, Nick and the leader went back to their headquarters and gathered the rest of the clan. The leader identifies a traitor within the Shiromatsu clan by revealing that the automobile that drove them to the tailor shop included members of the Suzuki clan. They make the decision to go after the Sisu clan in order to exact retribution. Meanwhile, Yu goes crazy when Nick tells her of Kyoshi's passing. Members of the Kisu clan are gradually eliminated by Nick and the surviving Shiromatsu members. Following Nick's effective intimidation of a senior CSU official, the Korematsu appear to be close to winning the war. But the head of CSU dispatches a small boy to Korematsu headquarters with a request to put an end to the conflict. He challenges the Shiromatsu clan to a non-violent combat zone. After accepting, the Korematsu commander takes Nick and the other clan members to the docks where the fight will begin. The CSU chairman unexpectedly shows up with Orochi, who acknowledges betraying the Korematsu. The chief of Korematsu who had regarded Orochi as a kid of his own, extends forgiveness and approaches, pleading with him to come back to Korematsu before it's too late. Orochi kills the Korematsu leader with a knife as they are embracing. With their weapons drawn, the Korematsu members are powerless to stop them and can only look on in horror. Then, Orochi volunteers his life and says that the Korematsu clan is done. Should Nick abandon you? Nick declines the offer, moves closer to launch an attack, but is shot in the leg by a sniper. In the meantime, the Korematsu headquarters is raided by the police and burned on fire. That evening, with the intention of stealing Maya, Nick breaks into her house under the Sisu clan's watchful eye. Then, carrying Kiyoshi's Deso sword, he makes his way to the CSU main office. Confronting Nick, she boldly asked the Sisu clan for permission to slay Orochi. With a backhand of the disco sword, Orochi declares that he will not fight Nick because he is an outsider and will never be a true member of the Yakuza. Nick suddenly snaps and swings the sword, decapitating Orochi. Unexpectedly, just as another member is ready to shoot Nick, the CSU clan chief intervenes. Rather, he encourages Nick to return home since he killed Orochi to exact revenge on the Korematsu. After complying, Nick departs from the CSU main office. Nick arrives at the flat where he has hidden Miyu at the end of the outsider. She gives him a strong hug, and a second Korematsu Yakuza who was watching the apartment bows down to Nick, suggesting that he could become the next head of the Korematsu family.